Like everything else in math, there are multiple ways to solve systems of linear equations. The method that I'm going to show you today is called solving systems by substitution. So this is the example that we will work through. But what I would strongly suggest you do before I start teaching you is that you pause the video and you write down these four steps. So once you do that, I'm going to show you how each of these four steps is applied to this specific problem so that you can understand it well enough to apply these steps to any problem. So before I start, please pause the video, ignore me for a second, copy those down, and then we'll continue. So hopefully you've done that and we're going to go through our four steps. So step number one says, isolate one of the variables in one of the equations. So that word isolate, that means to get something by itself. And when we're talking about a variable, we mean by itself on one side of the equal sign. So isolate, get by itself. For my basketball fans, when you hear about iso play, that means the player wants the ball on his own or her own, right? So isolate, by yourself. So we want, specifically it says, one of the variables, it does not say which one. So either the X or the Y to be isolated, to be by itself on one side of the equal sign. So let's go to our problem, leave the rest of the steps alone for now, let's go step by step. Look at your problem and ask yourself, which is the easiest variable to isolate? Is it the X or is it the Y in the top equation or the bottom equation? When I throw questions at you, obviously I'm not here to answer them. I would suggest you pause the video and think about it for a second and then see if you got the right answer once we continue, okay? Just to give yourself some thinking time. So I'm wondering what the easiest uh, variable is to isolate and hopefully you realize that it's Y in the top equation because it's actually already isolated. So in this problem, step one is done for us. There's nothing that I need to do except recognize which variable is isolated. So the Y is by itself. If I cover the other side of the equal sign, Y is alone on the left side. And that's what I wanted. I need either the X or the Y to be by itself. And in the first equation that already happened. So step one, done, it's isolated. So let's move to two. Two is very wordy, stick with me, you're smart, I'll break it down, you will understand it. Ready? Substitute the expression that is equivalent to the isolated variable into the other equation. Let's see what this means. Substitute, that means to replace something, right? The expression that is equivalent to the isolated variable. I'm looking for an expression that is equal to the isolated variable. Well, what's our isolated variable? It was y, right? So we're looking for what's the expression that's equal to y. Well, y is equivalent to 5x minus 7. So this expression right here is the one that number 2 is talking about. This expression, 5x minus 7, is equivalent to the isolated variable. Hopefully all those words are making some sense now. And what it's asking me to do with this expression is to substitute it into the other equation. So this expression is in my top equation. It's asking me to substitute it into the bottom equation. Where does it want me to substitute this? Again, pause the video, think before I say it, see if you can get it. When it asks me to substitute, it means you're replacing one thing with something else that you know is equal to it. So I know that this expression is equal to y. That means that I'm gonna replace y in the other equation with this whole expression. So this expression in the purple box is going to come into the other equation for y. All right, so that is step two. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to rewrite this bottom equation right now. Negative 3x minus 2. But now what I'm going to do is instead of writing y, I'm going to write down in parentheses 5x minus 7. Everything else I'm going to keep continuing equals negative 12. So take a look at what I did. Pause if you need to. The negative 3x came down. The minus sign came down, the two came down, but now instead of writing y, what I did was I substituted the expression that was equal to y. 5x minus 7 is the same as y. So, and you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. I'm substituting the 5x minus 7 in for y. So instead of writing a y next to the two, we wrote a 5x minus 7. So what I'm underlining in like neon green here, these two things are equivalent, right? So instead of writing y, I wrote 5x minus 7. I'm allowed to do that because I know that those two things are equal, okay? Everything else comes down um, in addition to the equal sign and the negative 12, all right? So step two is now done. Let's look at step three. Solve the equation to find the value of the variable. So now we're just solving equations, which hopefully you already have learned how to do, right? 
So I'm going to distribute this negative two out, but before I do, I'm gonna bring down that negative three X. So distributing this negative two, I get negative two times five X, that's negative 10 X. I have negative two times negative seven, that's positive 14. Bring down my equal sign, bring down my negative 12. On the left side, I'm looking for some like terms and I see them in negative three X and negative 10 X. So negative three X minus 10 X, when I combine like terms, I'm gonna get negative 13 X. Bring down my plus 14, bring down my equals negative 12. Now I have a two step equation. So I'm trying to get X by itself. I like to get rid of addition or subtraction first. So we're gonna do the inverse operation of 14, which is minus 14. And whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. That leaves me now with negative 13 X, 14 and 14 cancel out because that's zero. Zero plus negative 13 X is just negative 13 X. Bring down my equal sign, negative 12 minus 14 is negative 26. I'm gonna come up here, sorry, I'm kind of getting small. I'm gonna write it in different colors so it's not confusing. So I'm left with negative 13 X equals negative 26. That's a one step equation now. All I have to get rid of is the negative 13 which is being multiplied by the X, right? There's nothing in between, so that means multiplication. The inverse of multiplying is dividing. If I divide by negative 13, it'll get rid of it. They'll cancel out because negative 13 divided by negative 13 is one. But if I do it on the left, I better also do it on the right. So now I have X equals negative 26 divided by negative 13 is positive two. So I've got something really important. Let me bring it up here. I've got X equals two which seems like some type of important conclusion, but the question is, am I done? Is that my whole answer? Before we even look at step four for a second, think about what we're doing. We're solving systems. So what is the solution of a system? The solution of a system of linear equations is an ordered pair that's gonna make both equations true, right? But an ordered pair has an X and a Y, and so far we have an X. So hopefully you know what the next step is. We have to find that Y, right? We've got part of the answer, now we need to find the y. We do have the x coordinate. So step three is done, we solve the equation. Step four, use the solution you found, that's the solution we found in step three, to find the value of the other variable. So depending on what variable you solve for first, now we're gonna solve for the other one. So we've already solved for x, which means we still need to find y. Think about how we might use this solution to find y. Think about it, see if you can get it before I say it. So we're going to go into either one of these equations. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to say the top one looks a lot easier to use. And let's call this, if you're taking notes, find y. So this is us finding. This is basically step four that I'm doing right now. Okay, so we're going to find y. I'm going to take the top equation, y equals 5x minus 7. But I could have taken either one. Top equation just looks easier to me. And I'm going to use my solution. My solution was that x equals 2 to find the other one. So if X equals two, that means that now I'm still using that method of substitution. I get to substitute X with two because they're equal. So where I see an X, instead of writing X, I'm gonna write two, okay? I'm gonna put in parentheses so that it doesn't look like a 52 here, right? This is multiplication. The five and the X are being multiplied. So the same thing happens with the five and the two. I'm gonna bring down my Y equals five times two now instead of X minus seven. And I'm gonna go ahead and evaluate. So y equals, order of operation says multiplication comes first. So I have 10 minus 7, y equals 3. Now I've got the second component of my solution. I'm going to put it together. I like to write it as an ordered pair um, when you're dealing with the x's and y's. So my solution is 2 comma 3, or x is 2 and y is 3. And now, if you've already learned about systems, you might be able to connect this to a graph. Do you know what is supposed to happen at 2, 3? if that's really the solution of the system. If this is the solution, then the two lines that would be graphed by this should intersect at two, three. So if you had graph paper or if you have a graphing calculator and you wanna check this, if you graph these two lines, this is where they're supposed to intersect if we're correct, okay? And I've done that for us, so I'm gonna show you the graphs. So those are the graphs of the two lines. So y equals five x minus seven, that's the red line here and negative three X minus two Y equals negative 12. I put that in Y equals MX plus B and that's the purple line. And when you graph these two lines, guess what happens? They intersect at that solution point, two, three. Okay, just showing us in a different way that that is the solution of the equation, all right? 
And before I go on to another example, I do think it's always important to check whenever we can. So we're going to do a check. All right. So in order to check, 2, 3 must make both equations true, right? So 2, 3 has to be on the purple line and it has to be on the red line. So the way that we're going to check instead of graphically, we're going to check algebraically to see if that's true, is we're going to make sure if that point makes these equations true. So I'm going to substitute, right? My 2 is my X, my 3 is my Y. So wherever I see a Y, I'm going to write 3 instead. So I'm going to substitute Y with 3. Y equals 5X minus 7. That was our first equation. Instead of writing X now, I'm going to substitute in what I think was my correct X value. And now we're going to evaluate and see if we get a true statement. 3 equals 5 times 2 is 10. 10 minus 7. 3 equals 3. That's a true statement. So, so far we're so good, okay? Let's go to the next equation. That was our second equation, so let's substitute again. My X value was 2 in my solution, so where I see an X, let's replace it with a 2. My Y value was three, so where I see a Y, let's replace it with a three, and let's see if we get something true again. Negative three times positive two is negative six. Negative two times negative three is negative six. Bring down my equals negative 12. Negative six minus six is negative 12. So now I have negative 12 equals negative 12, which is another true statement. So what happens is because the order pair made this equation true, if you don't know those three dots mean therefore, so what I'm writing is this is true, therefore, 2, 3 is a solution for this line, y equals 5x minus 7. Now negative 12 equals negative 12 is also true, therefore, 2, 3 is a solution for this other equation. And if it's a solution for both of these equations, then it's the solution of the system. So you have to prove that's a solution for both of them, okay? So that is how to solve and check and verify by graphing a system of linear equations. All right, guys, in an effort to not make this video longer than it already is, if you want to see an example where one of the variables is not already isolated, watch the next video. I'm going to do one of those there, okay? In the meantime, here's your practice problem. I will write the solution for this in the description of the video. So try it on your own. Check the solution. See if you get it right. If you do, great job. If you don't and you are struggling to find your mistake, please feel free to reach out and I will try to help you.